Good morning. Hi, my name is Emma. I am a practicing Catholic and I'm trying to learn more about faith. So today I'm going to a Methodist service. I'm really looking forward to this because I know a couple friends who grew up Methodist. So I called one of my friends who grew up um, in a Methodist church. Her dad was the pastor because I wanted to make sure I knew everything that I could going into it and was also able to be like as respectful as I could be. So I'm excited. Let's go. And I will check in afterwards. I am back and first thing I have to say is that I genuinely really enjoyed that service. I had a great time. A lot of it felt very unfamiliar, but um, often in a very good way. So I'm thinking for this, I will give a little bit more background. Also, I think it's gonna be kind of a long video, sorry. <laughs> um, kind of more of a background, um, initial reactions, and then walking through the service. My understanding, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that there are kind of now two Methodist churches. There is the United Methodist Church, which is a little bit more like with the culture, a little bit more modern. Um, and then as of a few years ago, some Methodist churches were, um, I guess, wanting to be more traditional, especially when it came to including LGBTQ plus people um, in the church doctrine and um, I guess affirming versus not affirming that. So I went to a United Methodist Church service. Um, the more traditional one, I believe, is called the Global Methodist Church. Um, so I knew going into that this is going to be a little bit more progressive and that definitely was the case and that one of the first things that people said was this is a place where everyone is welcome regardless of your race, your religion, your sexuality, um, I forgot a couple other things. And another thing that I knew coming into this church was, at least in my perspective as a Catholic, this is a very new church. I believe, once again, correct me if I'm wrong, that the United Methodist Church, founded by John Wesley, was founded in 1968, which to me seems crazy. Like that was when, that was like a, less than a lifetime ago. Another thing coming in, I forget that other denominations can eat before and during services. So they offered me coffee in the beginning. It kind of <laughs> caught me off guard because I'm so used to like fasting for an, at least an hour before. But just another thing that um, that stuck out to me, I don't know if this is, if this was a coincidence or let me know, is that there is lots of green decorations. So I'm guessing for Catholic church, that means it's ordinary time. So not Easter, not Advent. Um, is that, I feel like it might be the same thing. Okay, those are my initial reactions. This caught me a little bit off guard that there was non, I guess, traditional church music in it. Like for example, they had someone singing Who Am I from Les Mis, which was beautiful. Um, I just did not expect it in a church setting, but I also think that's a testament to um, the idea of, I guess, like flexibility in this church and being able to put in something if it has the message that you are looking for and if it feels right. I thought something was really sweet in that they had a little children's moment. I'm not sure if this is a weekly thing. It seemed pretty regular, but they had um, all the children come up to the front and someone told them the story of the Ark. And this was during the main service and everyone else was watching, whereas in a lot of Catholic churches, if there is a children's uh, section, I guess, they'll call the children out during the liturgy of the word and talk to them separately. Again, there's a sign of peace, very cute. Um, I, I like that, at least in all the Christian churches that I've been to, that's been a part of it. This one was more peace signs rather than handshaking. Oh, something that I thought was interesting was the use of an inclusive Bible. And I haven't looked into this translation, um, but I, I am interested in what is different about it. I'm assuming like pronouns, um, maybe some other things. Uh, but I was really happy because the gospel reading had one of my favorite quotes, which was, um, it's Mark 8, 30, 36 to 37. What would you gain if you were to win the whole world but lose yourself in the process? What can you offer in exchange for your soul? So good. Um, again, when, oh, the sermon was so good. I was captivated this, this entire time. It was probably like 15 minutes long. And it walked you through the the formation of the Methodist Church and how it applies to modern context. And I felt like a lot of it spoke to just this general idea of bringing Christianity out of just this one to two hour time on Sundays. What the pastor said was that John Wesley was an Anglican pastor um, and he was in his words, vile, uh, like in John Wesley's words, vile, by preaching outside of the church. And part of this was to, he was in Bristol, England, which is 
traditionally it was a working class area and a lot of people didn't have a chance to take off two hours on Sunday. So by doing this, he was bringing the church to them in a place where they could access it in a time that they could access it. And he talked about this idea of, I want to I wanna get the, the quote right. Okay, I found it. So it was seeking personal holiness while also seeking social holiness and justice made real in this world. And to me, this reflected a lot of Jesuit philosophy and the idea of contemplatives in action, seeking that personal relationship with God, but also seeing that manifest through your actions in the world and spreading God's love through your works. And there was a lot of emphasis on social justice, um, with, especially in this sermon, about bringing the making the whole world your church, basically. And I like this. There are a lot of quotes that I wrote down, but undeniable belovedness of all people. Um, something that did really interest me was something about intentionally breaking unjust church laws, which is something that I never would have heard in a Catholic church, whereas I think our interpretation is more like all church laws are just. It's just some interpretations of them might not be um, just because humans are fallible and we can make mistakes when um, like understanding, processing, acting upon um, the word of God. Anyway, let me let me know your thoughts. Um, and yeah, they had a prayer of Jesus, which was the Lord's Prayer, but um, a quote contemporary adaptation. I don't want to read the whole thing right now because it'll take too long, but it was just, it was very interesting. I could see the same messages, but it was just so different. Um, and I think that speaks to an idea of like, do we take the Bible in con in the context in which it was written and like for the, the people that were writing it and be able to adapt that to our current lives or do we try to adapt these words from God because I think like a lot of the Lord's Prayer was taken straight from passages from the Bible with some um, with some room for translation um, and I think there's definitely like benefits of both uh, potentially drawbacks of both but it's an interesting discussion of like how how much we want to adapt God's words versus adapting our understanding of God's words anyway um, yeah honestly I I thought that was great. I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me from this was the pride in denomination. They talked about um, Charles Wesley being one of the greatest poets and greatest hymn writers of the Christian the Christian faith and just this pride in being Methodist and being part of this church of, that has done a lot of works that they're very proud of. So it was it was very beautiful to see. And yeah, I'm I'm very excited to have happy to have gone and excited for next week.